Okay, this wire goes to my switch. This one goes to my smart home hub. I think this one is for the cameras. Well, wait a minute, where does this one go? What about this one? Oh no. Looks like I got myself into a real entanglement. Welcome back. This video is going to be about Wi-Fi and hopefully it can help you keep all your devices connected and performing well in your home network. Even this device. What is that? A, a Wi-Fi walkie-talkie? Here's the deal. Mm -hmm. Just give me the facts. Just the facts. Only the facts. Breathe. Focus. Keep it simple. No matter how you get internet to your house, whether you use DSL or satellite, for your sake, I hope not, or whether you're in the same boat as me and learn to use LTE for a home internet source, or if you're fortunate enough to have a cable or a coax connection and you got cable internet, or even more fortunate and have the higher end fiber optic connection to bring internet to your house, you're going to need to make sure that that internet is distributed throughout your home to help all of your devices function. Now, some folks have their home set up with Cat 5e and Cat 6 cables running to each and every room and connected via a patch panel and a switch, keeping all their devices connected. But for most of us that don't have this type of setup, we still need to keep our devices connected. What system do we use? Many of the devices that we use today can only connect to the internet wirelessly. Whether we're talking about smartphones, tablets, laptops, smart home devices, they all need Wi-Fi. Besides maybe a gaming system or a desktop computer, most of our stuff is going to be connected wirelessly. So we need a good Wi-Fi system to ensure that our stuff can have a good connection to the internet. Now let's talk a little bit about what Wi-Fi actually is. It started in 1997 with the 802.11 version of it with a maximum throughput of 2 megabits per second. It got improved a couple of years later in 1999 to the 802.11D version of it. It upped it to 11 megabits per second. Then on to the 802.11G, it upped it to 54 megabits per second. Then the 802.11N, which is retroactively renamed Wi-Fi 4 by the Wi-Fi Alliance. Many devices today still use this standard. Then Wi-Fi 5, also known as 802.11ac, only uses the 5 gigahertz network, has faster speeds than Wi-Fi 4, but less range. And finally, Wi-Fi 6, which improves on both the speed and the traffic of the other versions, but only the newest devices can make use of this standard as this just came to market last year. Now some internet service providers will give you the option to either rent or buy a router directly from them. Now ISP routers from experience can either be terrible or pretty good. But I'm not really a fan of paying a rental fee on top of the money you're already paying them for internet access. That being said, depending on the size of your apartment or home, this may be all the equipment you need for your home network. And likewise, if you're using LTE for your home internet and the device that gives you internet gives you decent Wi-Fi to cover your home, there's no need for additional equipment. However, if it doesn't, you may need to look into getting a more powerful router to give you better Wi-Fi coverage and performance in your home. Now you don't have to break the bank to improve your home network. You can also turn old routers into access points by running an ethernet cord from your main router to the LAN port of your old router and giving your old router a static IP address from your main router. There are many step-by-step -step videos on YouTube that show you how to do this. I will say that you will need a wired connection from your main router to wherever you're going to place your access point. And if you don't have Cat 5D or Cat 6 running throughout your house from room to room, you can use either a coax adapter to make use of existing coax you may have in your house or power line adapters to make use of the existing electrical wiring that you have in your house and use that to effectively change it into an ethernet connection. Wi-Fi extenders are also a less expensive option, but I don't really recommend them because they use your bandwidth and can slow up your speed and performance significantly, and also have a funny time connecting with certain devices. Now mesh systems can be the perfect solution when you're looking for something to blanket your entire home with Wi-Fi, however they can be very pricey, so do your research, look at the specs, watch reviews when selecting a Wi-Fi mesh system. In my opinion, this is by far the best option if you want seamless and consistent connection and performance from your Wi-Fi. Another consideration for Wi-Fi coverage, 
is the placement of your rata. And this may sound simple at first glance, but depending on how your home is fed its internet and where the internet connection is, this may prove difficult. And if you're dealing with one router, you have to try to locate that router as central as possible to ensure the best Wi-Fi coverage for your home. Now this is where using a mesh system has its advantages over using a single router. And especially if you have a larger home, you can place the main router where your internet connection is and strategically place satellites in the other areas where the coverage is weaker and they, they'll overlap each other, giving your entire home Wi-Fi coverage. Beers in the bucket, feel free to log into the Wi-Fi. No password, obviously. Now let's take a look at the two systems I have at my house. I have a backup and a main. For my backup, I use the Netgear Nighthawk M1 on the AT&T network. And you can see I have the ethernet coming from the Nighthawk going to a Wi-Fi 6 router. And in the back of the Wi-Fi 6 router, I have another ethernet cord coming from that router to the satellite that's located in the living room on the opposite side of my house, giving me full Wi-Fi coverage throughout my house for my backup system. Now for the main system, I use my Mo Berryfy. That's right, not a MoFi, a Mo Berryfy. This is the same device that I showed you in the last couple of videos that I put together with LTE Fix and LTE Hacks. And I see I got electrical tape covering up those bright lights because they're so bright and this is in my son's room and I don't want to blind them. You can see I got the ethernet cord coming out the back of my Mulberry Fi, and that leads to my Orbi. Now the main router for my Orbi is located in the same area where the satellite for my backup system is, the living room, which is the opposite side of the house. So I got an ethernet cord running from my son's room to the living room and plugged into the WAN port of my Orbi. Then I placed the satellite upstairs near his room and another satellite upstairs in my room giving me full Wi-Fi coverage throughout my house. And I gotta say, the speeds on this Orbi are phenomenal. I get faster speeds connected to the Orbi than I ever did connected to my MoFi or my Verify. So that's my setup. With this setup, all my family's devices stay connected and we're able to achieve peak performance no matter where we are in our home. If you're looking to either set up or improve the Wi-Fi in your home, I hope you found this video helpful. If you already have a great Wi-Fi setup in your home, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you use and what kind of setup you have, what kind of mesh system, etc. I may be able to learn something from you. So please, as always, hit the like, subscribe if you're not subscribed, and please leave a comment. I love hearing from you guys. If you got any questions, I'll try to answer them as soon as possible. Again, thanks for watching and have a good one. I'm here to help. You believe that, don't you, Dad? I'm here to help you in any way I can. Thank you, you've been helpful.